My studio is now my living room. My new studio is my kitchen and sometimes my lounge. I'm doing my ballet classes in my it's sort of a study. My new studio is my living room. My new studio is my kitchen. I'm stood outside a very quiet White Lodge and sadly it doesn't seem right without the students and staff here. Too quiet for my liking. Since the school closed in March our extraordinary staff have worked tirelessly to ensure the school continues to fulfil its mission and to look after our students. Despite the physical distance and let's face it some of the most difficult circumstances we are continuing to nurture and train our exceptional young dancers. I am also very proud and grateful of how everyone has adapted so quickly to the virtual schooling and by always putting the students first. Most importantly, and even working in these very challenging spaces, it has been remarkable to witness our students completely engaged in the programme and also how they have remained so dedicated and positive throughout. They are truly remarkable. At the beginning of lockdown, it just kind of felt like I was going into a normal holiday. There wasn't much difference about it, it was all just the same. But then halfway through lockdown, I'd say, it just became, I can't do this anymore. I want to go back to school, I want to see my friends. But like within the last couple of weeks or so, it's become kind of a new normal. Academics start at 8.30, which then go on until 10.30. Then we have half an hour break, which then we start ballet at 11 o'clock. And that goes on until like 12.15. And then we normally get a chance to talk to Miss Catrack for about 15 minutes at the end. So if there's anything that we need to do or any worries that we have about anything. Um, and then we can have our lunch, which is great, and until two o'clock. And then we finish off the day with academics at four o'clock. The advantages of online ballet training is I can really focus on the purity of the steps and really go back to the basics um, and examine maybe where I've let corrections or things slip from my technique. I think for academic wise is some subjects we're allowed to work at our own pace and that's quite nice because it differs from when we're in the classroom and you're surrounded by people and sometimes I feel like if someone next to you is maybe working a bit quicker than you you feel like you have to work at that pace but I've realized that working on my own here I can slow myself down make sure I get everything correct It was really funny um, because um, today in ballet class, um, um, all of our pets were just like joining in, going on the dance floor, and it was a really good laugh. <laughs> the unfortunate event of not having your your um, laptop on mute, and someone comes in, you got to sort of talk to them, and then the whole the whole class hears, and it, it's it's great fun, provided it's it's not you that it happens to. Um, and as well as that, there's also been lots of inspiring moments that we've had via the online lectures. So obviously, so far we've had um, question and answer sessions with both Marinella Nunes and Stephen McRae, which have been very inspiring to say the least. The artistic team are providing an on-the-spot bar that sort of fits some, I've watched 138 children at White Lodge in different spaces. And there are things like a couple of them are actually in the bathroom, some of them are in a studio, some of them are in a kitchen with a piece of sofa there and a table behind them trying to move around that little space. So it doesn't give a lot of scope for the um, amount of movement we can do, but I've been very impressed with how much you can do standing still. And I think that the Q and A's that we've had with people like William Bracewell, 
um, Matthew Ball, Yasmin Nagdi, Francesca Hayward have helped the kids know that they too are doing simple in the kitchen, bathroom uh, exercises. And the whole, all of them are talking about the importance of underpinning that basic training, the chance to get both ankles strong, to get the balance right, to, you know, get the shape of something that they've been struggling with right and it's helped the boys and girls to value this chance to underpin their training we can do a really good structured bar and some center work we found doing too much jumping is difficult on their legs because they're on kitchen floors and hard floors tiled floors so they put down double mats if we're going to do some jumping and some teachers are doing jumping in trainers which i think the students find much better for their legs I'm so full of admiration for the students, just that one really, but I'm sure everybody's saying that. I think, you know, they are extraordinary. I think they have adjusted incredibly well. I think the level of motivation is amazing because, you know, we can do what we can from here, but being distanced is quite difficult for everybody, I think. And also, and for young people, this time of their life where they should be engaged with everybody else, and yet they've managed to maintain discipline and motivation and you can see them pushing themselves and still striving towards their personal goals. I think they're incredible. This whole thing um, started off, I suppose, with being closed in, being at the Royal Ballet School at White Lodge and realising I've got loads of studio space but I haven't got any dancers. And could I choreograph something in this environment? Could I choreograph and create something for students um, in their home environment, in this lockdown environment? Could that be interesting? Could I develop anything? How would I choreograph? So I got interested in that subject matter and discussed it with Chris Cowley, the director of the Royal Ballet School, and he got quite excited about the possibilities. So, um, he had a meeting with other international schools and he discussed it because of course everybody was in the same situation. How do we keep students motivated? Can we keep them creatively interested? And what can we offer them? And that was something that I felt I was in the perfect position to use the studios and offer something and create something or make a study, uh, become a choreographic study of what is possible in this environment. So we divided the students into six groups, which was massively challenging because some people lived in Hawaii, others in Japan, in Australia. So they were spread out all over the world and different time zones because of that. Um, so at times I was rehearsing at nine o'clock in the morning and there were other times that I was still in the studio at 9.30 at night to create work with the students. And then I realized as soon as we started working that of course some people have a studio to their disposal and other kids only had a kitchen or their living room while their parents were sitting in the back or you know not a great floor they had to rehearse in their garage so it meant that there were huge challenges and limitations as to what was possible and relating to each group as well some groups had more space as a group and some students had less space as a group. So I ended up creating sections just for hands because there just wasn't any space or just feet or just sitting on a chair and seeing what we could do around that environment. At White Lodge, we cover national curriculum, key stage three and key stage four. And we closed the school about a week before the state schools closed. So we swung into action with 100% of remote teaching, but it was all live, so the teachers were there on video with the classes. Um, we reviewed that over these holidays and actually felt it was so intense that we would reduce it to a minimum of 50% live teaching and 50% offline activities and offline working. Uh, we included tutor periods and assemblies and our mental health and well-being support as well in that. And actually it's gone down very well, particularly the fact that the kids can have a bit of time away from screen now to do work that the teachers are, uh, are giving them, but also to just take some rest time out, to do things which are slightly off 
uh, the specification and do a little bit of exploration on their own. So we've got new drama workshops going on, new science workshops and so on. For upper school, it's slightly different. Uh, we run a degree program, A-levels and something called the EPQ. And we did the same sort of thing in our first week. We did 100%, but we reduced that to 50%. Um, and that's gone down very well with the youngsters as well. And um, in terms of where we're going now, normally we don't get any academic time after about the middle of June with the um, upper school students. But this year, because we don't have any rehearsals going on, unfortunately, we're able to now uh, continue to teach on two days a week. So actually we're making up for lost time and also ensuring that we're ahead of the game when the children return in September. Healthcare team um, are providing a lot of remote healthcare support. So they, all the students have access to weekly Pilates classes, strength and conditioning classes. Um, they have one-on-one -on -one sessions with the nutritionist. And they also have group classes with the nutritionist that involve um, some short bite-sized video learning and also some live cookery classes. Um, we have the physios doing their remote one-on-one -on -one assessments, um, as are the sports doctors. Also, the rehab ballet instructor at Upper School is continuing with his one-on-one -on -one sessions um, with the students to make sure they return to ballet or we work on technique um, on a one-on-one -on -one basis as well. We are continuing to use SmarterBase, which is our sports management system, to help us help the team manage the students effectively. So they fill in daily wellness um, questions and we're, we're encouraging that. And the nurses are doing um, one assessments as necessary as well. So everyone's getting a lot of continued input from the team as a whole, which is really great. Um, emotional well-being is being supported um, by the mental health lead Hugh Goodwin and the uh, White Lodge School counsellor Steph Reddy. So the students at White Lodge have access to um, a virtual fuse box hall like the area like the physical area in White Lodge and that we put up lots of mental health and emotional health tips um, they also have continued one-on-one -on -one support available so all of those sessions um, are carrying on remotely um, and again, we've had really good engagement from students and we have continually remind them that we are here um, and that they have full support. I have tried to make Junior House as it is normally from 4pm to 15pm. And 4 o'clock we do our snack. So all the children come on, they log on with that biscuit, that cornetto, that, that, the kiwi fruit, whatever they've got. And then we all have a, a yadda yadda about what we're having for the snack and what we're going to be doing later. And then they go off and sometimes we have the supper club on twice a week and you go make your own supper, then you bring it back for six o'clock and we all sit and have our supper together and discuss who made the eggy bread, who put the cheese on it, who didn't put the cheese on it, who has to eat because mummy said they can't have that second time in a row this week. And it brings us all together. So even though in times of not of despair sometimes because the children don't know what they're doing, the parents don't know what they're doing. The parents just want to speak to me to make sure I'm really still here, that there really is a ballet school. And at some point we will be a ballet school again. It's just going to take time. Um, I think one of our biggest successes has been the student staff WhatsApp group, which we set up. Um, many of them have joined and uh, put posts on there regularly. Um, we started off with uh, a virtual Easter egg hunt on the WhatsApp group, which was fabulous. Uh, we had a, an Easter bunny that uh, hid various Easter eggs all around the building and the students had to guess where the Easter eggs were and that created quite a big buzz. So a lot of students joined uh, for that. Um, and then we've also uh, had an ongoing scavenger hunt uh, Mrs. Bolson's in charge of that and she's always coming up with the ingenious things that they have to look for, uh, sometimes individually or sometimes as a team and uh, we've got a scoreboard, a, a, a long running scoreboard for that um, and the students are actually very competitive, they, they really, they love it. Our main focus with training and access for our students is to make sure for the primary steps and for our associate uh, 
uh, cohort, that we are keeping them engaged and in contact with them. Um, so for the associate students, we are providing a, a weekly recorded class for various different levels of associates, different age groups. And for the primary steps, they're getting similar with some creative tasks that are suitable for uh, their age group as well. We're also providing a weekly newsletter uh, for uh, those programs. And again, it's age appropriate. And these are really giving the students some, some valuable information on uh, ballets, synopsis of ballets for the younger ones, some uh, background on choreographers and different dancers, interviews with former associate and Royal Ballet School students, alumni, uh, and, and various different uh, things for the older students, such as working on visualization or motivation or other aspects um, of dance pedagogy as well. So this is something that's been really su successful and something we'd like to carry through to the future. For teacher training, it's uh, our main focus has been to finish off the course for this cohort of students because this is the last term. So we're still providing uh, weekly sessions online via Zoom and uh, have modified their final assessment tasks so that they can be carried out externally. Uh, but uh, our aim is to have them all graduate on time uh, at the end of this academic year. I've been so impressed by the continued hard work of the Royal Ballet School students. No one would have imagined that this situation would have ever existed. And the way they have taken to it, working on their Zoom classes, listening to their coaches and continuing to improve is beyond impressive. I know they will take this time and use it in the future to remember how to work for themselves and to continue to improve no matter what the circumstances. And it stands them in really good stead for becoming professional ballet dancers. I wish them well and salute their courage. Dame Ninette de Valois once said that a school is the bedrock of any company, nurturing the dancers and choreographers of the future. I'm delighted to see the students working so hard and being so positive in these difficult times. We are committed to the young people that study in the Royal Ballet School because they are the future of ballet.